Clearly, you get a lot of email from um, uh, school teachers and students and veterans. A lot of them are just these really kind messages about how helpful our site has been in the classroom and how helpful it's been to their students. And it is so cool to see people engaged with this uh, uh, this massive resource, right? Uh, so it's, it's like very clear that our users have a deep passion for the site, and it's that that the passion is super contagious. Um, and so I, I love that. I love. I'm proud to be the person that's helping lead the OWL um, at this time, but I never forget um, that there is a sheer army of people that represent the past. Um, that, that 25 years represents hundreds, I think, of students, of administrators, and faculty collaborating um, to deliver not just campus, but uh, the world really good content that um, we are really, really proud of. I wish they could see it for the miracle that it is. Um, it began as a lark at a time when computers and writing pedagogy was developing and web technology was new and writing instructors were excited about innovative ways of teaching um, students how to write. The OWL itself began with materials that tutors created um, from working with students um, and this was old school handing over a sheet of paper a handout uh, that provided tips and advice um, easily digestible information to writers uh, that they could refer to once they went back to their dorm rooms or their apartments and needed to work on their documents so like we would have two workstations and then like the physical servers literally sat behind my desk so people would come to tour the writing lab and they would want to visit the owl and I'd be like, well, it's right there. And we put little statues on it. We had like a little owl, like, you know, shrine kind of thing going on. It was running Mac OS server, which was horrible. Like it, it was just like, it was held together with, you know, duct tape and chewing gum, essentially. The site structure was completely flat. There was no drill down and every single page on the site was numbered and the numbers corresponded to a physical handout in the file cabinet drawers at the front of the writing lab. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like, if you went to page like 54.html, it corresponded to handout 54 in this actual physical file cabinet because a lot of times instructors would come in and just ask to go copy a handout. So our challenge was like, okay, this is not a sustainable structure in terms of usability. So we had to figure out like, how do we actually make this a website and not just a reproduction of a file cabinet? The OWL wouldn't exist without the tutors who created information based on their interactions with the writers who came in to work with them. Many of them, um, they, they started off as graduate tutors, eventually undergraduate tutors were added um, to the staff over time, and these tutors knew from working one-to-one -one with um, writers where the gaps in knowledge occurred, um, how best to explain information, how best to teach that information in that environment, and so that's how the content of the OWL was shaped. I like to incorporate the OWL particularly during sessions with clients that come in for tutoring. 
in the writing lab. So my typical go-to strategy includes um, one, showing them how to search for the owl and making note of the fact that we do come up even before the bird, which is kind of awesome. And um, also showing them how to make use of the site map, which I feel like is the most underrated but most useful tool that we have. I think what the owl does really well for our multilingual writers is that it provides them with the vocabulary for addressing specific writing concerns. And that typically manifests itself in different tutoring sessions. So if, for example, the client is struggling with verb tense and we're reading the document out loud and they can articulate that it does sound off, maybe there is a problem with the writing but they don't know what exactly that problem is, I typically tend to use that moment as a way of turning to the owl and saying, actually, this is a problem with verb tense, and we can go back into that specific resource. And then if they were to want further clarification on that particular grammar concern outside of the information presented on the owl, they then have the vocabulary to be able to do further investigative work for themselves. But I actually use it as a resource for myself to try to teach or to talk about certain like grammatical errors or sentence structure or whatever it might be. So yes, I refer people to it, but I also like use it as a resource myself to help teach. The examples are super helpful. So sometimes as a native English speaker, sometimes it's hard to explain the rules for certain things because it's become such a part of the way that I've understood the English language and so I can notice when something's off in the sentence, but sometimes finding the name for it can be really difficult. So that's why the owl's really great because it names those things. I am a, a 20 year veteran teacher. I teach advanced world history and advanced AP uh, human geography. I've really tried to push my students to, to write and every tool that I can give them to improve their writing. I've, I've used and Owl just, just ranks the highest. It's accessible. It's not written in, uh, it, it's not written in the APA language or the MLA handbook language. It's not written in grammar book language. A lot of my overseas students really used it when they came to uh, university and college in the, U in the United States. So it was a, it was a good resource for um, getting them up to speed for college writing. In fact, I was just uh, talking with one of my friends the other day and um, was telling him how I got to create content for the owl and I was explaining it to him and I kind of referenced what it was and he said, like, I know, I went to the same high school as you, and this, the, we were directed towards the same content. Um, so I think it, it's very, it's a very far reaching um, website and it's really exciting to get to be able to work for it. Uh, I wrote a piece on classical, uh, the classical argument. So it was, it was rewarding for me as an instructor to be able to um, create this content kind of with my class of first year composition students in mind and say how can I, how can I write this, these pieces in a way that um, will make sense to these students, that will be beneficial for them and I think if I can do that then um, it will be beneficial for a anyone who might choose to um, access some of this information um, and some of these ideas. So um, the way that I went about making those videos for the OWL was, uh, you know, we go around the writer's room and we'd assign different topics to people that we had generated based off of what we thought was most important. And, uh, and basically I'd just look through the list, I'd choose something that I thought was interesting, something I thought was useful, and something that I thought I had expertise at. And uh, a lot of it was generating the ideas myself and writing out the ideas myself and just thinking how I could approach that topic and create like basically a little mini lesson that students at, uh, would find interesting online in like a small little piece. And a lot of the time just hearing what people said would really, sometimes that'd give me like the foundational ideas for how I wanted to approach teaching a particular topic. And uh, we go into the Video Express rooms at Purdue, uh, put my script into the teleprompter and just take a bunch of shots. And at first I was really, really nervous uh, because I've never done something like that before. And I did tons of takes the first time I did one of those videos. But after that first one, I, uh, I became much more comfortable with it. And I think I only did maybe like four takes. Give all that content to the uh, video editor 
at uh, the Owl, and then you know three months later I'd see a finished product which looked a lot better <laughs> than uh, than what I imagined it would because I don't know anything about how video editing works. They put it together really nicely. Um, I have a bit of a habit of always checking to see how the Owl is being received on social media. And it just warms my heart when I see random people from around the country, around the world, um, talk about how you know a page that all of our amazing graduate students and administrators have developed has um, made their writing experiences better. I think the, the most rewarding experience was talking to people and listening to people who you you know you'd never met, but um, who might not be English majors. And I'm telling you, thank you for you know the work that you did, which is odd and kind of insane at the same time, you know, because you start talking to people, and so many people that you wouldn't expect are using the owl or are being referenced to the owl by other places, and to hear them say that you helped in some small way was pretty gratifying. What has been really interesting for me individually is when I'm able to talk to folks outside of the university who ask me what I do, and I'll say, you know, I'm affiliated with Purdue University, I'm a student, I work at the Purdue Writing Lab, and on my off time, I am also able to produce content for the OWL. That raises a lot of eyebrows. I will say, I have had students that have said, I'm aware of the OWL, I use the OWL all the time, it's really helped me in my work, and so sometimes we'll start conversations just based on that. So, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing with argument here, but I've I looked at the, the Purdue Owl, this is what it says, and then it helps lead us into conversation. I think um, that the Purdue Owl has um, sort of a great, uh, very strong ethos. Um, it's, it's something that's used in high schools and colleges everywhere. I remember being in high school and having um, teachers uh, direct us towards it in terms of trying to figure out how to cite things or frame arguments, anything that has to do with writing. I wanted to go to Purdue because I liked writing, I liked studying writing, and I knew about the OWL. And almost every single instructor I had for years, from the time that I was at community college through my time at the University of Washington, everybody used the OWL. And it's just like the mantra that you hear, oh, I'm confused about this type of citation, I'm confused about this type of grammar problem, and it's just go to the OWL, go to the OWL, go to the OWL. When my students have questions, uh, when I have questions, um, I always tell them, well, go to Al. I've already started to give long-term big writing assignments to my, my, my kids, and I'm telling them, go to Al. <laughs> so. What always surprised me was the quantity and um, number of different types of people that we, were, we would reach, because um, I would get these emails from people who are like, yeah, I'm using your site to teach English to prisoners in South Africa, or we work at a dental office in Estonia and we want to send you an Easter card. <laughs> like people all over the world were using it when they had questions about English or to learn English. And that was really meaningful to feel like you were part of that kind of a resource. The fact that we're producing uh, this content, uh, we've got scholars working on this content, uh, and that we're able to put it out in the world for anyone to use, I think is a really beautiful thing, and it very much falls in line with my um, philosophy on access to, to information and education, um, especially with something as uh, difficult as writing. Writing is uh, tough. Uh, and we need all the help that we can get and uh, include myself in that category. Just because it was a miracle and just because that it began as a lark doesn't mean that um, what we do with the owl is haphazard. A lot of thought and planning go into it. I wish people could see the invisible labor that goes into the owl and all of the key actors and actresses involved um, from the content developers to the numerous um, OWL coordinators and web designers we've had over the years. I've had the pleasure of working with many of them and seeing the OWL transform from one version to another based on their expertise, on their research interests, and their, um, their knowledge. As anyone who teaches writing knows, um, so many students come to us beaten down by how they've been taught writing. And to have our pages make people feel better about writing is the best payment, the best gratification that I think I could ever get, 
um, and it, it is what sustains, I think, the reputation of this site. Yeah, if there was one thing that I wish users had a better idea of, it was just the scope of the number of hands who have touched this website uh, and have developed content for it. Uh, and that it really truly is like um, an effort that goes far beyond the people who are in my position or in the content coordinator position. Um, it's really representative of our uh, university and our program in a really special way. It's a beautiful answer. That one will feature prominently in the video I've been already telling. All right. Um, I just want to see what you look like. You're touching my water? That's right. I'm going to take a drink out of it yeah. on camera. Yeah. I'm going to backwash. But I eat so many mints that you won't be able to taste them. Bad. From here? Oh, yeah, these are. Oh, uh, okay. There we go. Good are. Lord. How many PhDs and PhD students does it take to figure this out? <laughs> We're smart. Um, what do you think the way this desk looks? Nasty? You got one photo that's tilted, and I don't know if it's on purpose. Yeah. So if it's not on purpose, we can try straightening it before the shot. Yeah. Um, I don't want to straighten. We're sort of trying to depict you as like a sort of nutty professor, you know, like a mad scientist. So I, I kind of like the uh, okay. picture. No, here, back where you were, but then sort of like your head's to this side a little bit. Bring it. That's like, unusual pose. But like, like this, just a little it's bit. A now, other way, number. other way, <laughs> other way. Now, too much. There, that's okay. And and uh, it'll move naturally, but like, yeah. I think if it's the yeah. end. All right, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs>